hello guys welcome back so uh, to continue with this advanced level framework course uh, till now what I spoke on is this first five sessions uh, we did started creating page objects and uh, uh, while creating I found something interesting called a selector hub so I did created one more video for that and today I'm going to continue on page objects okay so let me quickly jump to my clips and uh, let me take you through what I have created so as I promise I am going to create the page objects by myself not in the videos because that is more or less similar to what I did created in my last uh, framework basic level framework uh, but though the application is different but the way how we are going to find it it's similar okay let me come from start first page what I'm going to work on is my login page okay here I am so on login page there are basically three fields which I need there are few more but uh, I don't I don't uh, worry about them because I don't have any test case for that so log email field password field and login button okay and I did use name name and xpath so uh, I told you my sequence ID followed by name followed by xpath that's how I follow and that's pretty easy what I find uh, now next you see I have written something like this so uh, this is the constructor basically constructor of current class you see there is no return type and class name is same as the method name so constructor within constructor I did added one line page factory dot init element now what this is so this is the main heart of your page object model in fact uh, your page object model will not work without this particular initialization so when I say page page object model that is just one concept but when you use find by or find all or something like so at the rate find annotation so these annotations will not work if you are not initializing it and how we are going to initialize using one static method init elements which is present into a class called as page factory okay and this particular init elements method accepts two things uh, they have couple of overridden method but uh, this is what I need I need a method which accepts a driver that is uh, you are going to initialize this particular web elements and you see in this particular web elements I did not wrote anywhere driver dot find element by whatever name or xpath no nowhere I did mention the driver now how it is coming to picture that is with the help of this particular statement we are initializing all these web elements with respect to some driver variables web driver instance I would say right so that is what this driver and this this particular this is a keyword which refers current class instance instead of this I may write the class name in double quote or I may write class name dot class that will also work but this is a simple keyword that refers the current class instance so that is fine now the error is at this uh, driver uh, instance web driver instance uh, if you remember in an earlier framework I did I guess I did uh, created a test space where the driver was static and I was extending it everywhere so that if I extend let's say my test space to this particular class and my web driver instance is created in test space it will not throw me the error the web driver instance will be used from test space okay uh, in this case as well we are going to create a test space but that is going to be in bit different way because that is going to be thread safe and uh, now how we are going to pass okay so let us let us accept it from this particular uh, constructor itself let me say web driver else I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm doing this web driver driver okay now what happens so whenever I want to use this particular web element or in fact any method what I'm going to create within this particular class for example in this particular class I'm going to create a login method because on login page there is only as of now I need only one method called as login uh, method there could be few other methods in real time when you do a testing like uh, forgot password method or something like that okay whatever functionality you have on that all depends now I have only one login method now whenever I want to call that login method uh, I should create object of this particular class right now when I create object of this class it is going to call the constructor of this class and here you see I did created a constructor now when I create a call the constructor I need to pass the driver element okay now when I pass the driver this particular uh, page factory dot init element driver this this will get executed internally 
these all these web element will get the values so when this init elements get executed all these web elements get respective value from for this desired driver what you are passing okay so that's why i did a uh, passed web driver driver over here okay now let us create a login method quickly over here so let me say public void uh, login let me simply put it as a login and this method i am going to use for logging into the application now logging is pretty easy right so i already know the email text also, right so i already have the web element so text text email dot i would be doing send keys and here i would need to pass some keys right some email basically now how i am going to get that email so whenever i call this login method the person should pass me keys so i'll say string email and string password so whenever someone call me please i'll ask him please supply me email and password so that i will log in for you okay so i'll pass email and for password field again let me do the similar stuff dot send keys send keys and here i need to pass the password okay and finally on login button i need to click button dot click okay so here we might add some wait statements uh, some generic wait statement we will add so what we will do is when we create a common methods maybe in next couple of sessions uh, maybe after that all we'll create one common method maybe we'll wait for page load completes or we'll see how we can add that okay so we'll add those kind of things into these particular methods as well okay so this particular method is for logging into I'll say app only okay whatever you can provide some nice comment so that a person can understand what it is why it is used for okay now this is done so from this particular method from this particular class I just wanted to log in I might be logging with different users as I explained you earlier I have uh, different roles basically role specific credentials I can create and I can use right now from this login page objects class I'm done let me close this next let me go to home page objects okay now on home page objects you see i have written some xpaths and uh, these xpaths more it looks same for example if you consider these xpath dashboard projects task and users all xpaths are same right all remain same except this particular text right now wh what these xpaths are these xpaths are for this menu bar side menu bar okay so we have two things over here side menu bar and sub menu bar right under projects i have view all and add user under task i have two things under users i have three things right so it is for this so i just listed three dashboard projects task and users and under that i did uh, listed all of them that's what you find it over here but now the point here is uh, if if you are uh, if you are seeing these mini xpath and what change you see you see changes of only text okay now since i have written these xpath right what you may do okay first let us talk about this driver what i'll do is i will simply pass this web driver driver instance over here and that's it okay so this initialization will work in the similar way now talking about this particular stuff now on home page what i'm going to do is on home page let's say i'm going to click on users and then I'm going to click on view all that's what I'm going to do on projects tab or on task top uh, task tab so what I'm going to do is click on task and then click on view all or add task whatever as per our test case we can do all right uh, so point is I need to create multiple methods where I want to click on projects or task or users so for each and everything I might need to create a separate method and I can use the respective xpath since I already created the xpath that I can do for example let me show you quickly so I'll say let's say public void click on uh, tasks task menu okay and this is something I'll create and I already know the xpath let's say tasks uh, this one dot click 
okay so this is something i can do for clicking on task now for clicking on projects for clicking on let's say users and all those stuff on dashboard i would need to create a separate separate methods okay so now uh, here we can choose the approach whether you want to go with this approach or you want to go with some other approach where you can save your number of lines of code okay so it, it all depends on you how you are going to create your framework okay how you are going to design so it's it's all up to each uh, individual but now what a uh, simple way what i found here is while writing this xpath here i'm not going to use this particular method but what i will do is i will create one generic method public void uh click on menu or i'll say click on side side menu and which side menu you want to click that is something i will ask him as a parameter okay please pass me the parameter string menu on which menu you want to click so whenever i call this click on side menu uh, the person should tell me that okay he wants to click on projects or task or users or dashboard okay and only this single method will work for click on menu operation which is this side menu i would say main menu not a sub menu okay now for clicking on this menu we know that all these all these expats are working okay so now if we look at the xpath for this projects over here projects let me copy this okay uh, if you look at the xpath for projects task users it is almost same except this particular text called as users and this users projects or task that particular text is nothing but my uh, tab name basically or menu bar name that's the way how i wrote xpath you see span text is equal to projects it is not only span text is equal to project but i am coming from page sidebar menu followed by i followed by following sibling and span if you don't use this i then you might find it as a duplicates okay so just take care okay now i did copy the xpath so i'll say string let's say xpath is created this insert mode okay and here i should pass my variable called as menu right now it should work so when i say okay click on dashboard this dashboard value will get replaced over here and this xpath will work as a dashboard xpath if i want to click on uh, let's say users users will get replaced over here and it will work as a users xpath right so that's how it is going to save my time and number of lines of code so this is xpath for menu right now what i'm going to do is by using this menus xpath i now i this time i need to use driver dot find elements uh, okay but now here driver dot find driver instance i don't have any driver instance okay what i did till now is only initialized this particular web elements which are present uh, as a at the red find by right by initializing it uh, under this constructor because i am asking it here okay now when i create object of this particular class i am going to get this driver now can i do something like this let me create a web driver over here let's say web driver driver is equal to null okay i did create the object over here change to web driver okay and now currently it is null but when i create object of this particular class i am going to get this driver right so what can i do is can i do something like this that means the object of current class that is this dot driver that means the driver which i defined on the top can i make it equal to current value of the driver which i got while initializing this driver sorry this constructor yes i can do now i got the driver value okay now driver dot find element by x path and what my x path is my x path is menu x path right and simply i am going to uh, sorry i should be able to click on it pretty simple right so this one method will act as a for it will work for click operation on all of these tabs great now let us come to sub menu bar under task i have to under projects i have to so like ways 
right so let's say under task i want to click on add task how can i achieve that again i can create a separate separate method for each of them since i have the x path but again i'm not going to follow that particular approach so that means whatever x path i have created here i'm not going to use any of them right because i'm going to follow something like this right so this x whatever method i created is for click on menu bar uh, by passing name of menu okay and i'm going to repeat the similar stuff for sub menu bar click on i'll say side sub menu okay now uh, let me put the comment by passing the name of the menu okay now here where i want to click on this let's say view all under task i need two things because this view all is present under most of them like under projects it is under tickets it is under users it is right so let's say under task i want to click on view all so i need two things i need to know that what is the main menu on which i want to click and what is the sub menu which i want to click right so i need two things so for this method i would need two things string menu and string sub menu okay and now i already know how to click on the menu so this particular x path will work for click on menu right and the second x path right uh, this particular second x path okay let me copy this in this x path i am going to replace two things menu and sub menu otherwise uh, overall it is going to work in the similar way how uh, i did in my last method okay so here if i if i want to replace this users i will simply do a string concatenation and here i'll pass it as a menu and second one that is add user that is my sub menu again a string concatenation so it should be started and ended with double code and with plus symbols and here it is going to be my sub menu it's pretty simple okay and it should be ending with semicolon fine i got x path for my uh sub menu now i'll say string sub menu x path okay now similar way i want to click on it right so what i'll do is i will say this and instead of menu now i'll click on sub menu pretty simple right now you see uh if i wanted to uh, click on these give me a minute let me okay now if i wanted to click on these many menus right how many uh, methods or x path i would might have needed uh, it is like 12 10 to 12 20 to 12 into 2 or 3 so it is almost like uh, 20 or 30 30 uh, methods and x path i would be needed right but since i have created this generic methods right you see how it is useful for me I'm able to just uh, achieve the same stuff which 20 30 methods can do only with two methods right so this is how I'm going to work I'm not going to create individual methods great now this is what I needed from home page objects okay and now if I go to the task page object in task page object um, let me ask this web driver driver again from web driver driver that's it and under use say users page again i would be doing the similar stuff i will say web driver driver okay so i think that's it uh, for this particular video i'm going to close this video here and uh, in my next video what we will do is we will uh, start with test space right so what we'll do is we will create one basic skeleton so that you will get a little idea about uh, how the thread safe driver works and all right and that would be in fact more interesting what we were what we, we were doing till now is more or less something what we did in the last framework right but what something new we're going to study that is from next session okay so yeah whatever we need for this task page and user space methods and all we will continue as and when we need it when we start creation of test cases for now this login page and home page is enough for us okay so yeah that's it stay tuned thank you